Hello, everybody, and hello to you who are still coming in. Please find a seat. We've only got 20 minutes here together today. My name is Dan, and I'm here to talk about logs. Logs, right? A little bit about me. I'm an engineer at Scaleway. What is Scaleway? Scaleway is a European cloud service provider. We were founded right here in France about 22 years ago. We have all the classic stuff like bare metal and instances and a thing we like to call elastic metal. And we have all that really cool, good cloud stuff like managed Kubernetes and object storage and like serverless and all that good stuff. Uh, so if GDPR compliance and data sovereignty and sustainable business models are your jam, please do check us out. And if those aren't your jam, please do check us out anyway because we're a really good cloud service provider. Anyway, that's the last time I'm going to mention Scaleway. Don't worry about it. A little bit about me, and this is just for context. Uh, hi again, my name is Dan. I'm a recovering system administrator, 100 days clean on my honor. I'm an active open source contributor. Again, I'm an engineer. Et uh, oui, je parle la langue de Molière, donc bonus uh, si jamais uh, you want to ask questions afterwards. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> We're going to talk today about logs. So let's talk about logs. Now, if you have been a professional computer person for more than like 15 minutes, uh, you've encountered a log message at some point, somewhere, right? So like maybe you've managed a Linux server, I know I have, and you've like stared at syslog messages for hours and hours and hours until they don't even make sense anymore. Syslog, that's a log, right? Or you've done some front-end development and you've looked through like JavaScript console debugger messages in your web browser, hopefully Firefox. Uh, that's logs, right? Or perhaps you've used a fancy log aggregation tool uh, to put all of your different logs into one spot, and like, that's really good too, so definitely do do that. But have you ever stopped to really think about logs? I mean really stopped to think about what logs are. Probably not, but guess what? I did it for you. So here's what we're going to talk about today. What are logs really? Literally, what is a log entry? Literally, what is a log message? Well, to answer that, we're going to step away from our professional world very briefly for a moment. And we're going to look at something that you have probably seen many times. And that's this, a receipt, in this case for coffee. But you've seen receipts before, right? Uh, and before we go any further, uh, this is not my image. I literally just searched for Starbucks receipt. And this is the first one that popped up. And the fact that the very first result that popped up was going to be perfect for my presentation here today is interesting for reasons that will become clear at the end of this presentation. Anyway, here's the deal. This is a log entry. Just like any other log entry you have ever seen, syslog, in your browser, in your log aggregator, this is a log entry, believe it or not. So let's break it down. We'll start here with the date and the time. If this was the only piece of information that we had, it wouldn't be that useful, would it, right? We need more information. Luckily, we do have more information. We have the rest of the receipt. So right away, we've landed on an essential bit of information about logs. Uh, they're made up of different parts, right? And all those parts have to be considered together in order to understand, or at least attempt to understand, what it is that the log message is trying to tell us. OK, so that's important. Keep that in your mind as we go forward. What is this telling us? It's telling us that at a fixed point in time, something happened, right? But it's not a lot to go on, but it's a start. And already we can start asking some questions. Uh, for example, what happened at this point in time? Any guesses? Yell them out. What happened at this point in time? Coffee, coffee what? Sold. Coffee, got, coffee got purchased. What else? Is it when the coffee got sold? Is it when the receipt got printed? Is it when money exchanged hands? We don't know yet, all right? But we know that at a fixed point in time, something happened. The important thing here is that we get into a rhythm. Every time we look at a new piece of information, we ask a question, we ask a question, we ask a question. Super, super important. And it helps us to contextualize the information in order to gain a deeper understanding, a deeper understanding of our Starbucks receipt. Fair, OK. Also, very briefly here, I want you to pay attention to the formatting of the date and time. Let's go ahead and call that a date stamp, all right? I want you to consider the fact that none of us have seen this receipt before, and yet we all instantly recognized the format. The format. And very likely, if you're like me, had very strong opinions about how this date is formatted. Hint, it's formatted wrong. That's interesting. 
So let's ask some questions. The format is this day, month, year. OK, fair enough. And this tells us in very straightforward terms exactly when it went down, right? Or wait, or does it? What if the month was April? And what if the date was the 11th? As anybody who's ever had to deal with America can tell you, I'm not American, but I deal with Americans, this formatting, this way to format dates is tricky, right? And look at the time. It's 24-hour time, I guess? We don't actually know, right? We guess that, but we don't know. And also, what time zone is this in? Another open question, right? When did this occur in the context of the planet around us? Uh, perhaps we can infer it based on other information on the receipt in the log message, but based on what we have right here, we don't actually know. So what have we learned so far? It's always good to recap, right? We've learned that a log message describes an event at a point in time. An event and a point in time. That's a log entry, right? We've also learned there are ways of structuring data. This is key. And that the ways of structuring that data are interpreted by the receiver. The receiver, in this case, being us, right? We're the ones looking at it. We're interpreting that structure. And this interpretation of that structure is extremely important when we talk about logs. If you take nothing else away from this talk, and I hope you do take something else away, but if you take nothing else away from this talk, remember these two points. They will help you read and write better log messages for the rest of your career. And I know this because I have spent a lot of time looking at a lot of logs, and they're all a hot mess because someone didn't understand these two things. All right? Next up, here we have the source of the message. The source of the message is terminal, right? Is it terminal? Who is a terminal? Yeah, no, <laughs> it's not terminal. Uh, terminal is a key here, and the value in this case is a string of numbers behind it. So that string of numbers is in fact the source, I guess. Wait, did I just say key? Did I just say value? A key value pair, perhaps? Ah, uh, yes. A key value pair, that's a structure that's something uh, that we should be very familiar with as computer people, right? We go, okay, now we're getting into, ah, key value pairs. Yes, yes, Daniel. Yes, I understand what you're talking about now. In fact, the date and the time fields that we previously discussed are key value pairs as well, right? So those exist in the structure of, of logs, okay? And you're probably now looking at the receipt and going, wait a minute, not everything on here is a key value pair. And you're right. And we'll get to that. But first, let's ask some questions. First question that comes to mind for me is, is the terminal where the event happened? Remember, a log message is a point in time describing an event that happened at that point in time. Is the terminal where the event happened? Or is, the log, is it where the log message was generated? Or is it where the receipt was printed? And so on and so forth, right? We don't actually know yet, but these are good questions to ask. It's unclear, right? We have a source but it isn't necessarily where the event occurred. Here we've discovered another important aspect of interpreting log messages, and that's that the source of the event and where the event occurred are not always the same thing. In fact, in the world of logging, it's almost always not the same thing, right? Distributed logging, distributed tracing, big systems, the cloud, right? So on and so forth. So we've got to keep this in mind. When we read the log message, the event that it's describing is not necessarily the thing that actually made the log message in the first place. OK, but wait, what's this? It's a street address, or at least it appears to be. Is this where the event happened? Maybe, right? Or maybe it's where the terminal is located, which, as we've previously established, is probably where the event occurred, although not necessarily. And wait, as long as we're asking questions, when I say where, is that the same as saying source? Uh, where is there? And is there where I think it is? Could my log source differ from my event source? Spoiler alert, the answer is yes. And what if the event source differs from the log source? And what if by generating a log that changes the event in some sort of like terrible quantum physics loop? And as long as we're freaking out here for a moment about the nature of reality, I'd also like to draw your attention to this key. It doesn't have a value. 
This is not quite a fundamental thing, but it's worth noting and keeping in mind that logs can and often do contain incomplete information about the event that it's purporting to describe. So that's fun. I mean, is there anything in this log message that we can even trust at face value? What even is truth? How come this receipt is triggering an existential crisis? We're overthinking it. Let's stop our brain from spinning for a moment and come back to our key learnings. To recap, a log message describes an event at a point in time. The data is structured. How that structure and how we interpret it is important. And to that list, we add that logs and events described by those logs are related but fundamentally separate concepts. This is super, super important. You may have heard the term, the, the, the map is not the territory. Well, we could say that the log is not the event. Uh, again, uh, unless it is, the log message being emitted was itself an event, which presents a very dangerous recursion loop that we're not even going to get into right now. Because, whoa, right? But here's the twist. I love a good twist in a story. Nothing we've examined so far is actually the log message yet. Yeah, we've been calling it a log message. Well, I have on purpose. But we haven't even gotten to the message part yet, which, of course, begs the question, what have we been looking at if we haven't been looking at a log message? And the answer is that we've been looking at metadata in everyone's favorite font. Metadata associated with the event. And as computer people, what do we do with metadata in logs? We turn it into tags. Right? All this stuff, this useful information that isn't the message or like the event or whatever, it's, it's all there to help us to classify and contextualize the log entry. Of course, how we interpret it and whether we trust it uh, is another matter entirely. But when fate grants us structure, it is our sworn duty as system administrators to turn that structure into tags, probably using a grok pattern or like Perl or something because we want to guarantee our career going forward. Anyway, here's the thing. Tagging's a big subject. It's a big subject, all right? It's all about classifications and taxonomies, and anytime you land on a strategy and you're like, yes, we've got it approved, and we're going like, to put this into production, by the time you put it into production, someone pushed a code, and it's already out of date. So tagging is really, really hard. If you want to talk more about tags later, I'm going to be around this evening, um, around tomorrow. We can talk tags. It's, it's a big deal. But what have we learned so far? Once again, I know I keep coming back to this because I want to reinforce these points. It's super, super important. Date stamps and events wherein structure and interpretation matter. And logs and events are being different things. And to that list, we add that metadata is not the message. Metadata is there to hopefully help us contextualize and enrich that log message. And also tags. OK, great. So let's move on to the next thing at long last the actual log message. And surprise, it's a table, which we have not yet seen yet, right? Well, at least it's being presented as a table. Is it actually a table? It's certainly being presented as a table, and we'll get to that in a moment. But the important thing here is that we finally have an answer to the question that we weren't able to answer before, and that is, what event is this log entry describing? Any guesses? Any guesses? Payment? You, you got it on the first try. I was not expecting that. The answer is yeah. <laughs> it's describing a transaction. Who here has ever looked at a transaction log before? Show of hands. Yeah. Guess what? You actually all have. Every single hand here should have gone up, because every single person here has seen a receipt before. <laughs> OK. So you've all seen a transaction log. Uh, not necessarily a database transaction, although that's certainly also true, but this is a capitalist transaction, fine. Just bear with me on it, because this is a fun presentation. The whole point of this message is that it describes the event. In this case, somebody bought, a, I guess, a mocha for 88 units of currency, paid with a 500-unit note, received 412 units of currency in return, and at least that's what the message claims happens. Because, of course, again, we have to ask ourselves, 
how much do we trust this information? Is this information verifiable? Is it fiable? Right? We don't know. We can only hope. We do the best with the information that we have. Anyway, let's talk about the table here. I mentioned I get back to it. We'll talk about the table. This is a clear example of glorious structure, rigorous structure, right? It's got rows, it's got columns, it's got math, all that good stuff that we like. It's super, and I'm going to pose a question here. Is this an example of a structured log? Don't answer, because the answer is maybe. But first, we have to ask, what is a structured log? So I'm going to jump ahead and I'm going to give you the answer here, because I'm starting to run out of time. And the answer is, it's consistent formatting. Now, there are a lot of companies out there that want to sell you a log aggregation product. Big log aggregation tools, a lot of money, monthly commits, and so on and so forth. They have long think pieces and hundreds of pages of documentation. They're going to send somebody to train your engineers on structured logging. It's not magic. Structured logging is consistent formatting. There, I just saved you and your company like half a million dollars. You're welcome. Right? So that's it. We're going to get back to our previous question. Is this a structured message? Arguably, it's arguably a structured message. But let's think about it for a moment. This isn't literally how data gets stored, right? Computer doesn't actually store things with dashes and you know, spacing and whatnot in it. At least it shouldn't. This is a presentation format, a presentation format. Uh, the data could be and very likely is structured in a certain way, but, but not like this. This is, again, a presentation. Keep that in your head, because in a few slides from now, this is going to blow your mind. All right? But first, what have we learned so far? Right? Come back to those core learnings, always, every time. One, date, stamps, and events. Two, structure and interpretation. Three, logs and events, not the same thing. Four, metadata is not the message, also tags. And the final item that we're adding to this list is that presentation is everything. I'm going to come over here and make sure you heard me on that one. Presentation is everything. It's the only thing that matters when it comes to logs. It's a bold statement. How are we going to back it up? Simple. The information is irrelevant if nobody can understand it. Right? It's how all of these other things are tied together. Presentation, the date stamp, the event, how we format them, right? the structure of them, the understanding that logs and events are the same thing, the understanding that there's metadata and there's tags to help us contextualize, so on and so forth. All of this exists to help us understand. And we can understand it if we can't read it, if we can't parse it, if it doesn't make sense to us. Presentation is everything. All right, I mentioned I was going to blow your mind here for values of mind-blowing. Are you ready? Yeah? yeah? Come, are you ready? Yeah. There you go. If at the end of the day, presentation is the only thing that matters, then this and this are the same thing. <laughs> OK? There's no difference between the Starbucks receipt and Datadog, as it turns out. All right? They're both ways of presenting logs in a way that makes sense to the receiver. And that's us. We're the receiver. Right? Remember when I, earlier when I said it was interesting that uh, I could pick the first receipt that I found lying around on the internet, and it would be perfect? That's interesting. Why is it interesting? It's interesting because we all know what a receipt is. We all know what a receipt looks like. We all know what to expect when we look at a receipt. It doesn't matter if it's in a different language. It doesn't matter if it contains symbols we don't understand. We recognize a receipt when we see it. We know what it's telling us because it's presented in a way we all understand. Your logs should be that way, too. And if they aren't, that's your first problem. That's it for me. Thank you very much. If you like my style and want to check out any more of my talks, here's a QR code. Speaking.dark.ca, I'm around today and tomorrow if you want to chat. Thank you very much.